sounds like this on the, the uh, CLT or central limit theorem uh, for okay, I write some P for linear eigenvalue statistics. So the P is a, a function of okay, this is matrix as JJ element of this matrix of uh, matrix and N. Here is a sample covariance matrix with just some projections, projectors on the M independent vectors. So as I was something about tensor structure, which is uh, in this vectors, so we choose uh, in big one, in big M, uh, ID copies of uh, vector in big, which is the uh, tensor product of two vectors. Mm -hmm. So it's like in big E, in big Y, one, two, B, Y, from one to N. So we divide these vectors from R, N, and the vectors with some moment conditions, and this uh, R, N squared. So what such a model, what such a model, came from uh, information quantum information theory, but there they have key vectors, uh, key vectors, but for all paper purpose, two is enough. Uh, sorry, sorry. So what is small y1? Any vector? Or, or no, we it? have two. They are ID. Uh, later I will add some moment conditions. For so example, like, like Gaussian vectors? Or? So, for example, on unisphere. Two wow. vectors with unit, all Gaussian vectors. So. Okay. And, and sorry also, this uh, phi ij, what is it? Is it? It is a test function. So it is a test function, such thing. So P is, it's, what is it? It's just trace phi of an n. Uh, when uh, phi is, uh, phi is 1 over lambda minus z, we get uh, still chess, still chess transform of empirical spectral distribution. So we get uh, space and n minus like z. Okay. If I divide by n, this will be, let it be gamma n, I will need it. So 1 over n gamma n is a still TS transform of uh, empirical spectral distribution uh, this matrix. So this is counting measure, which we know for very wide class of uh, this vector EV converges to marching up pass through law. So this is the first step for such models. What we know is that for a very big class of uh, vectors EV alpha, the empirical spectral distribution, which is a counting measure of eigenvalues, converges to the marching up pass through law. So, so sorry to what? The last okay. thing. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I suppose this. Okay, so for me, this is for, uh, um, Martin Capasto law. So. What is that? I'm, I'm sorry, I should know this, but I, I don't. Okay, so this is really uh, this is from high dimensional probability and test infinity. So, in such questions as convergence, okay, I need to go a few steps back. Okay. Before you do it, another short question. Yeah. If uh, you said uh, that one of the basic examples is given the distribution of the sphere, then nothing would depend on y2. On what? Uh, so I can take the uniform distributed on the unit sphere, yeah? Or no, no. Uh, okay. So interesting that here it depends on the, this. Okay. Uh, one step back, okay. Three years ago, it was about Martian Capastro. <laughs> but I know, so for me, it's my life, but... <laughs> okay, well, what is it? Uh, 
for any matrix. So if we can see the symmetric matrix here, okay, let it be symmetric. First thing, if you're in asymptotic regime when n is to infinity, so everyone is interested in eigenvalues. And in asymptotic regime, global asymptotic regime, where n goes to infinity, and we look at the whole spectrum, the first question is convergence of uh, uh, counting measure of eigenvalues. So it is for Wigner matrices, it's uh, Wigner semicircle law. For sample covariance, such matrices called sample covariance matrices, this is from statistics. It's analogous is a so-called marching pastor law, which was proved in 1967. So what do I mean? And if lambda j we do not need uh, what reserve are uh, eigenvalues, we can introduce uh, for every data that n n delta is a just counting measure of eigenvalues. We count how many eigenvalues fall in the data and divided by n. So what is known for this matrix? If if we take just m n without this uh, structure of and if we can keep m, m proportional to m, m, m goes to c. Uh, and in the simplest case, we can take uh, well, y alpha uh, i decopies of y and y such that uh, had zero mean and uh, it is uh, isotropic. I can say uh, in its coordinate. Y, y transposed is one over n. Mm -hmm. I could write it in terms of its entries. It's, it's each entry is zero mean and where it's one and they're independent. Or Martin Capastro uh, also you can take here in the simplest first result by Martin Capastro also you can take on the unisphere. Then uh, then we have this. This counting measure converges uh, weakly. No, M here also tends to infinity and the proportional to the so called uh, Martin Capastro law. It has density, and I can write here this density, but really we do not need it here. So it is no distribution. So it looks like this. So we have this result. We have many, many, many generalizations of this result. So first of all, or, or they also have here tau alpha some coefficients. We also have, but I don't write it. Also, you can put uh, deterministic mass matrix inside, outside. You can add matrix. So we have such results for such matrices. What is interesting, but in first results, um, entries of we were supposed to be we were supposed to be independent, and the first result uh, when uh, for y alpha is essentially independent entries was obtained by Ajor and Pasteur in two thousand What they proved, they realized this. Uh, they realized that uh, really what we do need here is just independence of vectors, but we do not need such an independence of coordinates. What we need, uh, okay, again we have this first condition. And the second condition is the suppose that for every matrix uh, is diminished in the end. Is 
variance of quadratic form by n equals y. So you can approach with uh, element you need to keep the whole vector. And this is uh, has to zero. So if you have these two conditions, then again you have this convergence. Weekly in front. This result was the uh, this probability one. And usually but, uh, here they proof in probability. But it can be done with probability one. So what does it mean? With the convergence, uh, this means that so this means that for every bounded and count continuous function. We have this probability uh, one over n sum phi of lambda j converges to the average with respect to the slope phi mm. Okay, it has density Okay, but two main methods how to prove such results. Wigner proved it using moment method, which means that uh, this uh, convergence is enough uh, to prove for phi being lambda to k or bk. This is moment method. And uh, Martin Zapastro they introduced so called uh, method of TTS transform. So it is enough. To show this uh, for functions you know, phi being equal to 1 over lambda minus z, where the phi. So in this case, uh, you put here lambda minus z, so th this is, you need to show that. 1 over n, if I put here, I get trace of the resolvent. That it converges to the uh, CTS transform of this uh, limiting measure. And this is very nice. Objective with this is a resolvent. You can use here uh, instrument of linear algebra, this analytical function. So, to prove this result, the main idea is to show this convergence for the normalized trace of the resolvent. To this end, you need to show that variance is small and to find the limit of expectations. So, this is just a first test in. The, global regime. So first we find the limiting distribution of eigenvalues. Uh, what about this vector? So they also they show that uh, vectors uh, normalized isotropic with uh, local k distributions satisfy this condition. So we have this result for local k distributions. Okay. And this is usually considered as an analog of law of large numbers. We have some divided by n and get non-random limit. So the next natural question is uh, central limit theory. What about fluctuations about this limit? So this thing does not fluctuate, so you need to renormalize this thing to find the order of variance, abstract average, Normalized, centralized, and okay, get uh, or do not get. Okay, in, in this case, uh, there is a lot of uh, the history of central limit theorem for such matrices is long. I have many, has many names, and uh, for such matrices, for Wigner matrices, but first results were uh, 
about uh, matrices where all entries are independent and have four moments. So for such results, the convergence of um, uh, empirical distributions, it, it is two moment result. Usually we need two moments and nothing else. Okay, if uh, we have to have different uh, distributions, we also need Lindeberg conditions, so for tails, like in classical probability. Uh, for central, okay, to prove uh, central limit theorem for this thing, we, okay, we need to change this, this normalization. So we need to subtract average So what we need to do for any matrix? How does it answer this question? So we need to, first question is uh, to find k such that variance phase uh, of phi is all and k. And then. Can I ask another question? So it's the, the role of m and n. So you say that m divided by n converges to some constant c. Yeah. Yes. It, so it doesn't matter which constant this is or. Positive. Sorry. Uh, no, any constant. This uh, this loop just will depend. The support of this uh, law will depend on this c. Okay. So this so, changes sort of. Yeah. Here, here, of course, this. Yeah, this law depends on the C. Okay. okay, so first, when you are dealing with fluctuations, first you need to find the order of the fluctuation, so find this K. Yeah, and for example, okay, if you take uh, in classical probability, if you have, if you have sum of uh, N independent uh, random variables, uh, variance will be N. With, uh, with variance 1. But here, due to the fact that uh, we have a very specific uh, dependence uh, among this lambda j, that somehow fluctuations cancels and uh, this variance is of the order 1 for this model, for example. Not for all models, but for, for this model, uh, which is here. No, and there's some additional conditions. Really, variance is of the order one. And then, if you find this k, on this k, then you take this trace phi and n minus equation divide by n. Divided by two, and we want to show this that it converges to some psi, but psi has a normal distribution to zero mean, and variance which depends on this part. So this is question, it's a question for model. So we need to find the order of variance and we subtract expectation, divide by square root of variance of this order, and we want to show that this converges to uh, Gaussian random variable. With zero mean and variance, it depends on phi. Uh, what is interesting, so usually, okay, if we do not have sparsity, some fancy matrices, but for Wigner matrices, for simple covariance matrices, this is four moment results. It is already known that we need four moments of entries, and doesn't matter what specific distribution these entries have, we have this uh, central limit theorem without this normalization factor. This in case matrices without the structure, for this it is proved. And what else is interesting is that, okay, <coughs> this result depends on. Uh, smoothness of phi. So even if you if phi is, is not continuous, then this variance will be in not of this order. It can be it change the order of you know, variance, which is new in comparison to classical probability. Uh, so uh, returning for a moment to 
this model. So what we usually expect, as I say, about such results that, and not about only such results, what we usually expect in random matrix theory is that asymptotic results depends on structure of matrix and or some number of moments. So, and it doesn't matter what is the specific distribution of entries. And what appeared in this model, uh, that we proved CLT, we proved CLT, such result for this model, and for quite big class of random vectors, but it appears that uh, vectors on unit sphere behave better than Gaussian vectors. So what we proved for this model, CLT, or we find class of vectors for which we can do CLT, and class of test functions. But what was, and this could be considered as quite standard in sense that not an unexpected result uh, in the random matrix theory, but this is one interesting detail in our results that it's, uh, it depends on distribution of entries. Uh, so, so what we I will show in particular that if we take this y one two being some Gaussian normalized, and then variance for this matrix will be of order n. And okay, phrase phi. So I will use this zero to show that uh, we subtract expectation for centroid. So we need to divide the square root of n. And it converges to Gaussian and the variable with uh, some variance, which depends on phi. But if we take this y, i, y, 1, 2, being uniformly distributed on the mini sphere, then we show that this variance will be of the other one due to the very delicate cancellation. So, so and again, we have. CLT, but we do not need to normalize. We just show that this phrase T being centralized, it means we. What, what is this zero there? Uh, so it is phrase minus phrase. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is also we have uh, Gaussian limit, but with another variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still don't, uh, I don't understand. If I, y is a tensor product of two independent uniform vectors of the sphere, then a y alpha, y alpha transposed, uh, in y alpha, you have alpha transposed, you get y2 multiplied by y2 transposed, which should kill it. And leave and then the model falls back to the standard Martin Kopastor. So you explain me this later because I do not see why it kill it. Okay. So <laughs> maybe I don't see something. Maybe I don't see something. So we just take two. I don't know how this. I don't see why. So we have Martin Kopastor here. Okay. If you have Martian capacitor, even if you, if you take k vectors, we still have Martian capacitor, which is interesting because we have uh, not so much randomness in this model, but we have. So you have Martian capacitor, maybe for simpler reasons than I think, but. Okay, one more question here. Do you 
Actually, uh, you would, ex you know, I well, I would expect that uh, for, for the Gaussian case and the case for uh, on the uniform distribution on the on the sphere, you would more or less get the same answer, right? This is what I expected. Uh, so yeah. that's no. <laughs> this is what I expected, but uh, it appears that it's not. Especially is that okay? Is that okay? No, but she, she expected it also. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, for Gaussian vectors and uh, Gaussian vectors and uh, Gaussian vectors, it's the same. You have Borean theorem, for example, uh, which says that if you have a uh, vector, let's say, and uniformly distributed on the unit here, then it is known that we normalize by square root of n, the first component of this n converges to a standard Gaussian. So, yes, exactly. Uh, but you know, um, uh, central limit theorem is much more delicate than first order question. So, we just, for example, another example when uh, we got uh, what we did not expect. Uh, okay, so we proved the central limit theorem uh, for Wigner matrices, uh, for example, for the sample covariance. So we know that one over n. the single entry vector to normal uh, distribution. So what about uh, single entry of this matrix? So one would expect why so because of this result and because okay, uh, of another thing that also we expected to have here Gaussian limit y. You can write it for example um, T Where lambda j, uh, lambda i eigenvalues, and this is eigenvector. And we have uh, this um, uh, delocalization, you know that this is of the order n. That what we expect that vectors, uh, eigenvectors are uniformly distributed, not close to uniform distribution. So we again have y over n. We again have this normalized trace, so we expected, that's why we have central limit theorem for this, we expected for this, but it occurs that this thing being normalized by square root of n, centralized converges to Gaussian, that the variable Plus, uh, plus something, it doesn't see, and uh, okay, we want so it, it depends, depends very specific on this distribution of entries. So, this is very, very an universal result. So, central limit theorem expectations are much more subtle. So, this was also unexpected that we didn't get this. This was a short question of 
my talk, so if for CLT and, and in particular what we notice that in these two vectors we have a different length. The full present result for this matrix, uh, I will return to this simpler version when we do not have the tensor structure. What we have, or how the CLT looks like. So, CLT, the case when MM is just sum of alpha and alpha transpose. What we need <coughs> from this vectors to have CLT. Conditions look like this. No. First, uh, as it was, so first we need. Uh, So if 
I have all this. But then we start all the material. The whole. So it's going to be done by again, myself, and the whole. And then the whole. We have the condition 1, 4. And uh, test function 5 for the solar space 2 plus delta. So it's free transform has 2 plus delta moments. Then <coughs> variance. And uh, we have centralized uh, the statistics and projects to the, the Gaussian random variable and variance uh, here depends on the uh, on phi, A and B. There is an expression. I think it's huge, and uh, so if you, if you just found this limiting variance, and it depends on also this function phi of the same. What what A and B? A B. Oh, that goes. That's why I need them. <laughs> and if everything is independent, then we get the whole result. Then the whole independent vector. So. This condition three means that this is Lindbergh. Lichtenberg exchange, I mean. Uh, the proof. Uh, the last one. No, no, no. Uh, we you have equivalence up to the fourth moment. And this is just. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. So I, I don't know how to write here. In fact, we have here more than we need. It seems to. This is too much. And, uh, Maybe kind of Lindeberg, yeah. We have some uniformness up to eight minutes. Okay, if I wrote all these conditions, I need to show that such vectors exist. <laughs> so, because I can say, let everything be fine. Okay, then we use this. Uh, 
Welcome, Keith. Then it can be shown that variance of this form is of the order one over n. The n is deterministic matrix. You take deterministic matrix any with the operator on one. Uh, this is just measure results so you can show that it is one over n then applying hinge inequality hinge inequality you get condition four this follows from this one then the post moment is also the and so this condition is fulfilled what about uh, the third one and Show that R to two, this mixed moment is one over n squared plus something small. Mm. And the cup of four is all one over n squared. So Vectors uh, isotropic normalized with uh, log concave uh, and conditional distribution, they almost satisfy this condition, but we don't have this A and B. So what does it mean? That it means that okay, you can have a whole bunch of CLTs. Maybe this if moments fluctuates, that you can and this uh, a, a different. You can choose different subsequences. And you will have CLTs with different variances because we don't have here the same thing. Okay, but th this demo allows to show that variance is uh, of order ones, but not the need. For example, one, it's five to know that it's mean zero, we don't need it even. Ah, if a conditional, I'm sorry, so if a conditional, so you do not think uh, this uh, expectation is zero, it follows from an unconditionality. Is this what you... Yes, would it imply unconditional, doesn't it imply expectation zero? Yes, it means zero, no, it doesn't imply, so... Uh, but you don't mean But if unconditional, then zero means. Ah, okay. okay. This, this way, so, okay. Uh, I shouldn't try, but... Also, one additional conditionality. Uh, so, there's an other figure about uh, the proof. So, what I want to show you. Uh, so, What about tensor model? So this was all everything uh, all about uh, just simple model without this tensor structure. So let's return to our model and then and alpha and alpha and So what I proved is the following. Is that if index one, index two, in this definition satisfies this condition uh, one four, and we need here n to n squared times to sub c, and test function phi being smooth enough, then we have. Then 
is of order m, not one here, but of order m. So we need to divide by square root of m. And the one over two to m, and then zero, converges to a Gaussian random variable. And here I need to write this uh, variance. And this variance look as And here this variance is A plus B plus 2, something like you see maybe this 2, and integral, integral doesn't matter, but then here. Minus a plus plus the positive spectrum. So what is important here is that uh, that is proportional to a to b plus two, and uh, it is zero if vector is uniform distributed on the unit sphere. So what is zero? This. Okay. If y Then you probably distribute it on the new sphere, then if you just count this moment, you get zero. So it means that, okay, the answer is trivial, so this uh, means that we need to renormalize our statistic to get non-trivial non answer. So and this was starting point, so we will check this. I hope this is zero. That's why we need to renormalize our statistics and uh, what we proved recently. Resolvents, then we you uh, the result, then you transfer to the general set uh, any statistics. Why? Smooth enough. So we take uh, such file, so and we dealt with gamma n z, which is phrase and n z. And this is in fact the main subject we are dealing with uh, the whole time in the asymptotic regime. This is the main the most important thing. So, and we show that uh, if you have this model and if big one, if big two, uh, uniform distributed on the unit here, uh, same variance of this trace is of order one. And we proceed to for imaginary part of the statistics of this place. So it is a normal distribution with uh, zero mean and variance which depends on the z. So we have an expression and this was uh, quite much more difficult to prove because you don't just uh, it's not like you put another vector and have another expression. Uh, we have this another order due very delicate constellations. For example, to get uh, results uh, for, for this type, 
it be just look as an input convergence to Martian capacitor law. And here, when looking just convergence, we need, to estimate, we need to estimate the speed of convergence. We show that in this case, uh, the speed of convergence is 1 over n squared, for example. So it, it was much more delicate. Okay. And uh, a few words about how to prove, uh, so how we work with uh, such theorems. Uh, the methods is all known, known method of characteristic functions. You need to show the characteristic function of your statistics converges of so characteristic function of corresponding Gaussian distribution. Okay. This is, but then the details. So this is the main idea. And uh, one of the most difficult part is to uh, get, um, estimate, uh, to, to bound the variance. And second is how to, it's easier to get uh, everything for traces of the resolvent than how to get this for general function phi. Okay, you can write uh, uh, the Cauchy formula, which connect uh, if phi is analytical function, you can write phi as uh, integral over 1 over lambda minus z over uh, zeros, and su in such a way you can connect a function analytical with uh, lambda minus z, 1 over lambda minus z, but then you need analyticity, but all result depends only on few um, derivatives. So, and uh, uh, Maria Shribina, she met uh, one by Johansson, uh, she proved the following very, very useful theorem, which says that if we have function from the HS, this of the space, then variance of trace of C of Mn less than some constant C, norm T, integral eta <coughs> to S minus 1, and eta, integral. We have variance of gamma n of uh, mu with the eta. So if you have the bond for variance of the resolvent, you always you always have some eta in denominator because norm of the resolvent is less than one over eta. You always have some etas in the denominators, and number of this eta will give you smoothness. So this should kill the atoms which you have here. <coughs> <coughs> so and this bound will give you class of uh, function, test functions you can work with. So 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 now uh, Philip so so uh, some uh, get better result, but this doesn't give you. The best result, but at least it will not need uh, analyticity of this function. So you can have here, you will have some number of derivatives. So next, uh, no, and next you take um, characteristic function of your. And the value and the, what you need to show you, it is enough to show that its derivative is uh, minus x plus n plus n. So if you get this, then solving the differential equation, you get it. From this, you will have that z is n minus x squared over the x. So, and this is i x, or i plus i. No. This trace by zero. And again, here, there is a way how to connect this trace. 
Okay, you have Cauchy formula, you, you can find an analytical function, you can, if you, okay, cut the tails. You can connect this with trace of the resolved, but there is a nicer way using Poisson kernel, which allows you to connect this um, trace with the resolvent. Okay, well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.